Guys, this will be a hard landing. Um, good morning. This will be a hard landing from um, the Cyborg presentation to banking. Actually, uh, I was very astonished what is happening on Earth. Uh, I never had the feeling that Earth is interrupting my life. Actually, banking can interrupt my life. Uh, and this is what we are working on. Um, Actually, the ones who do not know Fedor, maybe uh, just a brief introduction. Fedor, we started our journey 10 years ago already. We started a journey uh, which ends up, let me say today, 10 years after. It does not end, but having a look today, it is we are seen to be the oldest fintech bank of the world, which means we are running, we are up and running since 2010, and already we are the oldest fintech bank. Uh, not a long time to become the oldest. We started our journey actually in the light of Web 2.0 development and social media. That was the days when we thought new banking can have a chance. New banking behavior can have a chance, like user exchange, transparency, sharing, organizing of group, all those things we know and behaviors we know from Web 2.0 and social media. And we approached regulators saying we want to have a banking license. We applied for banking license and in the period waiting for the license, the crisis happened. And once Web 2.0 and social media gave us the opportunity to create new banking, the crisis showed us one thing. There is a need, a must for new banking. It needs a change in attitude. It needs a change in customer centricity thinking. It needs a change from bank centricity to customer centricity. It needs to create services and products that are for the customer and not for the bank. All right, that's the one point. The other point actually looking into the crowd today is, I'm, I'm glad you made it to the stage here and to this presentation, not because of me and not because of Fedor, but obviously for whatever reason you're interested in finance or you just fell asleep, I don't know. Or maybe this goes hand in hand. Um, so, but you're interested in finance and let me tell you, even that this is maybe a tough message, but you need to take care of finance. You need to take care of your money or somebody else will do which is not a good message. And actually, this is something else which is in our core DNA that we want to re-empower people to think about their money, to talk about money, to find out what the best money behavior is, to get an, a, a decent understanding how to improve my personal financial health, how easy that can be, how joyful that can be, and so on and so forth. So we try to bring back a little bit of the fun, fun into financial services. Uh, and into money matters because it is so important. 50% of you will end up having not the right pension scheme. 50% of you will end up having no pension at all. So you should think about it. It's not unimportant. It might bother you, but you should think about it. So that's the, let me say that was the kind of educational part of my presentation. Uh, let's come back to the more joyful part of it. I've been asked to think a little bit about the future trends. Well, as you can see on the slide, we think that banking will be disintermediated uh, in, in... Don't be offended by that. <laughs> well, we have for pension, we also have crowd finance then. Maybe you should onboard. Um, so we, we, we think that there are a lot of startups uh, coming up and, and delivering new services, new processes, new uh, real accepted, well accepted innovations, which will end up in a, in a very fragmented market environment on the one side. Um, this environment will be very powerful to really push banks into directions that never have been like customer centricity and innovation. We already can see that, that some banks are moving. You can see that, that, uh, that there are a lot of banking conferences actually. A lot of bankers now suddenly start talking about disruption, innovation. A lot of bankers are telling me that they are uh, digital as well. And once I ask them, why do you think you're digital? Well, I'm using a laptop. Okay. So wonderful, that's the first step. Um, a lot of bankers think they understand digital lifestyle because they get told about digital lifestyle from their kids. Does not mean that you really understand it, you know? So they read about it and this is uh, actually what is happening. This intermediation will be one point. It's driven also by the huge and easy success, uh, sorry, um, easy uh, access to data. So data is something that is definitely very critical to the banks. Um, I would say at least with 70% of the banks, you should be very afraid once a bank is telling you, I discovered big data to be a very interesting environment because that means you. 
You know, you will be the target of their big data activities. So you better watch out once they're telling you this. API developments are uh, very crucial to this whole uh, environment because data must be accessible. Internet of Things is something I would say will be driving that development enormously because maybe also your solutions, your companies, um, your products need to cause a financial service. And what can this be? This can be a transaction, this can be a payment, this can be a value transaction in any meaning, in any kind of currency, in any kind of digital currency, cryptocurrency, or even fiat currency, which means euros and something like that. That can be alone a financing need because maybe one of your things is ordering something at a vendor and you need a financing to do so, so there must be the interfaces, there must be the data exchange so that this transaction can happen. Which means, 10 years ago when we started our journey of feeder actually, I never would have thought that banking will become that exciting as it is today. It is absolutely fantastic what kind of opportunities we have. We really includes, includes you. We, that includes us as a banking platform and infrastructure. You, that includes you because you could be an entrepreneur, you could be setting up startup and, uh, companies, but you need to think about early stage then, about your financial solutions in the background, about your financing. Maybe Maybe you have a crowd finance project for funding your company about your transactional connectivity. How do you make your customers pay? Maybe how can you finance your customers in order that they can shop at your shop and so on and so forth. Which means banking will be the oil of your business and banking on the other side needs the data to be that oil to your business. Having the APIs, having the data philosophy around it makes it a picture perfect scenario for whatever will come along. This is an easy prediction. <laughs> That's crystal clear to me. Um, if you disagree, raise your hand and tell me. I'm happy to learn. Um, the low-hanging fruits on this development are two scenarios, actually. And, and this is, then, let me say, the short-term development, uh, which we will see there. It is, on the one side, um, what will be fragmented will be hard to manage, will be delivering a huge complexity. So once you think about your banking relation today and you would service that with fintech companies, actually, you would, I guess, something, you would need something like 30 to 40 fintech partners. Just imagine you have 30 to 40 fintech partners as an app on your smartphone, you go ballistic. You go, that will be also a space trip, but a different. You really go ballistic because this is hard to manage. You have different user experiences in each of those. You have different logons. You have different KYC processes. You do not even know if those partners are really decent and reliable. Maybe you have to exchange 10%, 20% of your partners because the company got bust, and so on and so forth. So that's a tough exercise. This is also why I think the acceptance of FinTech so far is limited in comparison to what we would have as a market potential. So it needs consolidation again. Yeah, that's crazy. You, you, fra you have a fragmenting development and then you consolidate it again, which means it needs a marketplace that is consolidating those fragmented offerings, that is guaranteeing you for the sustainability for the partner, for the quality of the partner, for the compliance of the partner, easing the KYC and onboarding and the UX handling so that you can aggregate it. But the change is, you aggregate the offer, it's not the bank anymore. Because once you are a customer at a bank today, the bank is telling you what is the offer for you. And if you say, I want to have something different, then the bank is telling you, no, that's not working. We have this product. Now I want to have a different product. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. So you need to go to another bank then, which is, again, a painful process. So this marketplace development is one prediction for the future. The other prediction for the future is, and, and I think this is a low-hanging fruit for you, I, I killed that one. Da, 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 da. Black screen. So I, I can speak about it uh, without seeing the slide. The other prediction for the future is the chat. Here we go. Thank you. Um, which means easiness. I predict, I, let, let me put a bet on the table and maybe after my presentation you come back and say you, you bet against it. So my bet is in five years, um, we will only talk to our accounts, I would say more than 50% of us will talk to the accounts, less than 50% of us will still type in numbers, dig through the numbers, have a look through all transactions and do it the classical way. 
So my prediction is chat in combination with artificial intelligence will replace the way and handling we talk to our accounts today. Why? Because it's first of all creating a huge easiness. Second, we have strong market drivers actually on the market that are going into this direction. Just think about Echo, just think about Siri and all this, which means the audience is getting used to this. Why? If I talk to Echo, why shouldn't I talk to my account? So that's, I would say, the next natural step because, you know, once I talk to Amazon, I could say, hey, account, can I afford to buy that? And the account would be responding, no, Matthias, you cannot. I say, why not? Yeah, because you told me next year you want to go to Thailand for vacation. I said, yeah, so what? Yeah, but according to your cash flow, you have to make a decision. You want to shop now or you're going to go in vacation. So A or B, okay, vacation. Okay, so you do not afford it. But maybe we have a nice loan offer for you, which you could afford. All right? So this is about the conversation I anticipate to have with my account, like it or not. Maybe the account will be more like a coach to us, which I think is very favorable because once I look into statistics, actually, you know, we have an increasing amount of people having distressed home financial situations, having a distressed situation on their financial future because they spend money on crazy stuff they shouldn't spend. I'm not educating people, but all I want to do is I want to support those people actually to get a better financial future on that. So this would be my two low-hanging predictions and bets for the future. Marketplace, bet number one. Bet number two, chat in combination with artificial intelligence. Happy to take your bets after my presentation. Happy for your many thanks for your uh, attention. The Even next, quicker. The next speaker cancels if you ask questions. Okay, so um, I just learned we have some more time. Um, I take the bet on stage. Uh, real quick. Um, <laughs> no, if, we, uh, if you have questions on that, we also could speak about APIs, data banking, um, Internet of Things. You know, this is all in the background. Um, if, if you're also interested in uh, how, how could finance support your business on that, how is an API useful once you are a startup entrepreneur or so, happy to take your questions on that. So the Kick next, the next speaker, um, Stephen Bartlett, if any of you are here for the next talk, um, unfortunately could not <coughs> make it today. So for, um, we're going to answer a few questions. So if anyone has a question, raise your hand. I'm going to toss this to you. Please catch it, and then you can talk to the next person. I was also not making it almost because my taxi driver drove me to the Western Funkhaus, actually, oh. you know? And I realized I, I realized I was the only one. <laughs> so we've been sitting in the car like hell, you know? Thank you. Yeah, let's, let's see if that works. Hi, Matthias. Thank you for your talk. Um, why do you, what do you think is the main driver for the chatbot revolution taking another five years um, being an active part of our life in banking? For, for what kind? Sorry, I had a noise spike here. For what kind of a revolution? What do you think is the main driver that the chatbot revolution will ah. take another five years uh, in your prediction? <clears throat> I think the main driver is convenience of people. Uh, so I think the main driver will be uh, really the convenience of the offer uh, that can be then delivered to the people. It's really easiness, easiness of success, uh, access, um, and that will be driving it because the retailers in combination with their customers will find out that the chat is a very, very smooth way of getting in engagement. Oh, I, I totally agreed. Why, why do you think this would take another five year, ah, years? Okay, why I think it takes another five years in banking? Um, well, maybe in the German environment it takes us even longer. Uh, because out of, uh, out of our all really global discussions I have from regulators in Buenos Aires to meetings in Singapore and so on, I, would, I can say with all good belief that the German environment is the most traditional and conservative in friendly words. I would say, you know, we're really the back end uh, to all this. Uh, and, and in Germany in particular, people are first of all asking, yeah, is that secure? Do I need it? While in other regions, we experience that people jump on it, say, give it a try, let me test it, and after the test, they come back and say, that's useful or that's not useful. So that's a different behavior, first of all. Second, I can imagine that we have a, uh, some lobbying actions in, in the German environment from the traditional banks actually fighting against that, calling that insecure and data breach and whatsoever. So I, I see this coming. I do not think that this will be data. I do not think it will be an API issue because data, philosophies, visions, and APIs are in place already. And I think we will see the first solutions coming up next year. Thank you. 
But the acceptance will take some time, maybe. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. And then there's another question over there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you believe that there will be no bank offices on the streets in the future, or they will still remain as an alternative to digital banking? <clears throat> so the, the question is whether banks will remain or not? Yeah, the, but, the offices, the physical offices on yeah. the streets. I think what we see is that um, through... Now, we are on the, on the stage of having something like 200,000 customers in the, in the, which we achieved in the first six and seven years. Yeah? And now we are really with having a new financing and so on and so forth. Our, our plan really foresees a hockey stick, which means we need to grow per year now what we did within the first seven years. All right? So we really have to think about alternative ways than uh, the way we communicated so far. Uh, and we communicated so far really online only, which means performance-based only via our community, word to mouth, and so on and so forth, which ended up in a very low cost per new customer, actually in a record low cost per new customer. Why do I answer like that? Because I think maybe we have to think about offline as well. Yeah? Uh, the first bank we founded was Direktanlage Bank, the AB bank, and after three years we opened up the first brokerage stores. More like meeting points, like uh, community meeting points where you can have a chat about stocks. You know, stock traders are very talkative. They are always sharing the success. They never share their failures. You know, they're all Warren Buffett. There's no one is broke. All are Buffett. Um, <clears throat> so those were the meeting places to do so. Um, maybe we, we will have to think about that for feeder as well. This is maybe why I'm here, to have a kind of personal contact. I think that the branch banking definitely has a future once it is a good branch. All right? What we see today in branch banking is a nightmare. That's, 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 that's crystal clear. The way we do branch banking today, no future. The way we do branch banking today, which means you have a lot of machines in the room, which I might appreciate, is definitely disintermediating me to the, to the staff behind the machine. So this is unpersonal, it is very technical, it is 100% unemotional, so this will not work in future. Uh, I think branch banking has a relevance in future for complex issues, for maybe once in a lifetime advisory, you buy a house, you buy a flat, that's a very intensive uh, exercise actually. This is not, nothing, nothing, believe me, you ever can do in a two minute thump only exercise. But we need to do it right. Hello. Hi, my name is Manuel. Um, thank you for the presentation. I was wondering if you could go a little deeper into your uh, marketplace prediction. Um, predict, I'm interested in two things. Uh, how do banks feel about sharing clients with competitors? And the second is, in terms of regulation outside of Germany, how are you seeing regulation for this marketplace idea? Uh, who's trying to figure it out? Where do you see some lights? So the, the, the first question is an easy one. How do banks feel about sharing customers? <clears throat> they hate it. Of course. Yeah, that, that's definitely, <clears throat> at least some banks, some banks to recognize their customers as a treasure. Some, not all. Uh, some see their customers to be a cost fact. Um, others see it to be uh, the future of their business. So all in all, and generally, they hate it uh, on the one side. Um, on the other side, this is also why I'm saying that the collaboration of a fintech company with a bank is a dangerous thing, in particular for the fintech, because I would say that the fintech, once the fintech is dealing with retail customers of the bank, the fintech will be eaten up one day. Yeah? So this is, this is not, you know, in this old McKinsey example, this, this collaboration is not a team collaboration. This is the collaboration of the chicken with the pig. You know this picture? You know, where the chicken goes to the pig and says, hey, come on, pig, we do a, a joint venture. Uh, both of us, we uh, chip in something. I give the egg and you give the bacon. Yeah? So, of course, the chicken survives that. The pig doesn't. So that is about the fintech collaboration with banks, I would say, all in all, if you are competing about the retail customer. If the fintech is delivering the improvement of a back-end process 
of a back-end service of, for instance, uh, regulatory tax services, regulatory data mining whatsoever, and coming back with data reportings, um, compliance reportings, um, risk management whatsoever, the fintech is of service to the bank, then this will be a picture-perfect example, okay? So this would be a nice collaboration. Retail competition, fintech bank in the same environment will be fatal. Um, I think that the marketplace is something out of regulatory's view is something like an introducing broker, all right? A vermittler, introducing broker, an agent. Uh, and this agent has some duties which come along with compliance and regulation. Uh, the duties might be that you do, once you onboard somebody to this platform, you need to do at least, I would say, a minimum due diligence. So talking about uh, having a look to the kind of managerial reliability of the guys, everything you more or less would do according to KWG Kreditwiesengesetz once you want to run a bank or financial services entity, uh, which is pretty similar all over Europe. Um, so you need to check about the decentness of the managers, about the funding and sustainability of the company. Of course, you have a look to the processes. At least scratching, at least scratching the surface there. Because once it's on this marketplace, it is nothing that can be compared to a Google Play marketplace, which is pretty much deregulated. It's more like a trusted marketplace, even stiffer than Cupertino and Apple is doing it with the App Store. Uh, it is a regulated marketplace, which means it is, but then to the customer, a trusted marketplace because the one who is running that marketplace is in charge for the quality of that marketplace. This delivers trust. Trust, again, in finance, the biggest currency we have. Yeah? The really biggest currency we have. So this marketplace must deliver trust to the retail customers by checking on the, on the offer. It must deliver Easiness in excess, as I said, because it is totally unacceptable that you have maybe 200 offerings on this marketplace and each of them has a different KYC or onboarding process. So there must be a data management in the background. There must be an onboarding management in the background, a KYC process, KYC compliance in the background so that the one fintech company offering a service knows that just in case Matthias is teaming up to this platform, Matthias is KYC'd by Federal Bank, for instance, KYC'd by Federal Bank, Federal Bank itself is a regulated entity, I can be sure that this person is existing, I can be sure that this person is acting according to anti-money laundry, AML, that is about the most, I would say, the most um, paranoid uh, environment you can work in, AML. Um, so you can be sure that everything is running a proper way. Also, that is a job of the platform in collaboration with the banks KYCing the customer. By the way, we come to the point that KYCing a customer is an asset. Even that you might even run an e-commerce company. If you have an e-commerce company and you can use our API and you can ping us whether Matthias is a KYC customer of the bank and we would ping back via the API yes, no. And once we ping back yes, and you're an e-commerce customer, you know that my address is guaranteed, that I'm existing, that I'm, I'm a real relevant person, and you can shop your goods to me without being afraid that this is kind of a, a crime drop box or whatsoever, you know? So this is another point for data exchange from banks to e-commerce or any kind of commerce. Uh, guaranteeing security, enlarging security, increasing security for both sides of us and, and making our lives easier. So. Is that about? Uh, that's just the, the top of the iceberg, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, that will be all for the questions for now. Um, thank you very much. Everyone give a hand clap, please. <laughs>